for a special fund to be set up to cater for students who are unable to raise fee and other requirements in order to join Form 1. Now, this reaction is following various concerns that have been raised following the rise in number of needy students who are seeking admission in various schools without fee. Now, will that special fund mitigate that financial crunch? Because one might argue, as it is, we're simply kicking the can down the road. Now, I'm joined by two individuals. One of them, the Kenya Secondary Schools Head Association Chairperson, Kahi Indimuli, via way of Zoom. Equally, from our Nakuru Bureau, I'm joined by Tom Keynes Baraza, who's an education analyst, to talk more about this particular matter. Kahi Indimuli, I'd, I'd like to begin with you. And right off the bat, you're one of the individuals individuals who's perhaps advocating for a different approach in terms of setting up this fund that might mitigate the financial challenges that some schools might face themselves with. First of all, how, how is the rate of admission compared to those who are paying fee? Um, at the initial stage, we definitely heard of complaints from various principals that yes, we're admitting but most parents are saying that tough economic times, hence they're not able to clear the fee. Well, what's the situation as it is? Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Jesse. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate uh, the efforts that have been done uh, by various entities and particularly government in introducing the Elimu scholars uh, to support uh, those very needy uh, students. Uh, it should be understood that um, apart from that support and uh, support also from equity and other, other firms, uh, we are still noticing quite a number of students that are reporting without uh, fees. Uh, and this is challenging. That is why, uh, as heads, we are saying, uh, can we relook at um, uh, uh, the way we are disbursing some of these uh, bursaries, especially um, in a way of coordinating uh, so that uh, we do not have one student maybe benefiting um, from several kitties of bursaries, especially those given by county governments, uh, uh, given by uh, constituency bursary funds. Uh, at times you find that um, a student, one student may be getting more than one uh, support. This is because each entity give support without knowing that the child has received support from another organization. And at the end of it all, you find some of these students uh, may be having excess money and then parents would come uh, demanding refund of the excess. So there is need to have a coordination on how these bursaries are being done. Uh, secondly, uh, the, the, the challenge that is faced uh, comes in more with some of the students who have been in uh, academies. Uh, students who have been in academies, I must say, um, so, uh, they are not really qualifying much to, to, to get support from the, the Equity uh, Wings to Fly Scholars Program or even the Elimu uh, Scholarship Program. It is believed that um, uh, because um, uh, they were in um, in, uh, in an academy, therefore the parents uh, uh, were able. Uh, but um, our, our check uh, reveals that a majority of uh, the academies would support uh, children uh, up to the end of class eight, especially if these children were good performers because it contributes to the popularity of the institution. So they would support this child until the child sits KCB, gets very good grade, and after that, the institutions abandons the child. When this child now makes an application, because of the school this child went to, it disadvantages uh, uh, this candidate. And we have seen quite a number of them who are actually uh, in an academy uh, coming, they have a challenge, and they could not qualify uh, uh, to get some of this scholarship. So there's need again for, for cross-checking even if the child has been in an academy, how uh, can we verify that uh, this child actually was being supported by the proprietor of the academy to allow the child finish class eight? And after that, uh, because the child has now done the work the proprietor wanted, uh, beyond that, the child is left on his or her own. So those are some of the things that we are seeing. And that's why we are advocating 
can we have a central uh, um, uh, placement uh, uh, bureau, for example, in which I can place the name of the child I'm supporting. Then if uh, you, Jesse, or any other entity wants to support a child, you can go there and check whether this child is being supported. So that information is central. Uh, we have seen cases in the past where even a child has benefited from wings to fly. And again, you find the constituency bursary fund sending some money. Uh, you find uh, another entity sending some money. And this is because of that lack of uh, central information. Okay. And in so doing, you find other needy students don't benefit. But one needy child has benefited a little bit more. Those are the challenges we are seeing. But we must appreciate the efforts of government in the introduction of Elimu uh, scholars, uh, at least uh, 9,000 students every year for the last three years. And what other uh, equity bank uh, and other banks and entities have been doing to support needy children? Okay, Elimu scholars, wings to fly, just to name a few. Uh, some of these programs meant to support the needy students. So what you're pushing for is more of coordination of bursaries and whatnot. So we avoid cases of duplicity, duplication, and equally, so we don't cut off some of those who learned earlier on in the primary level in academies and that. So let's listen in to Tompkins Baraza just briefly. Your take on that in terms of the approach needed in order to support at most the students who are needy and definitely need help in one way or the other. Do you support some of the sentiments raised by Kahin Demuli right there? Yeah, first of all, just I want to thank you for incorporating me into this show. And greetings to my friend, my senior, Kahi Indimundi, who is the head of uh, second schools, heads, chairman of uh, second schools, heads association. Yeah, he has a valid point. Like, for example, I saw one student who had uh, applied for bursary. That is a uh, Bungoma County bursary. He was awarded. Then the same same boy applied with a, another organization. And uh, the other organization paid for the boy. So after some time, you know what happens? Uh, what happens at, uh, when these count uh, governments uh, offer scholarships? They normally write letters to schools so to allow the learners or the students to be admitted there. Later on, they send the money for that boy. So you, you find out that uh, at the end of uh, four years, that student is having uh, excess fees, excess balance, and uh, somewhere we have another student who never managed to secure that chance to be educated. Okay. So if we have some central point whereby we have a data, if a particular student is uh, being supported, let's say by Jomo Kenyatta Foundation or Family Bank or Equity or Elimu, the same sort of student should not be supported by other organizations like uh, CDF, like the county government or um, other religious organizations because you can find even one student is being supported by three sponsors yet we have another one which who, who has a genuine case and is not being supported and the other thing which i've seen with these scholarships is that uh, most of those learners come from well-off families you find that uh, most of them come from academies in the primary and uh, many leaders based on marks. They say we want students who scored 350 marks and above, or 380 marks and above 300. And most of those students come from academies, mm -hmm. whereby parents are in a position to support those learners well. So if we just say that we are going to support students who scored 308 marks, and in most public schools, you find the first student is a scoring like 330 marks, 300 marks. But our leaders only rely on a 
max. Okay. They say bright, but uh, bright students. Okay. So if they do enough investigation, research, we will have so many learners, even those which, who, who are having 290 marks, below 300 marks, being supported, rather than only paying for those who come from well-off families. And uh, another thing is that, uh, we, which I've seen, that uh, they, 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 they normally support children of those members or the, the, their friends. For example, if you are uh, in a county government, they, they ask you, do you have any student you want us to support? Okay, okay, then okay. that student who come from uh, a family yeah. who cannot f support, or, or may maybe that family, the father of that child is not supporting the, the governor or the member of parliament in that constituency is, in that, is being denied that bursary. So Baraza, I, I think that definitely points to yes. uh, the you know permutations in this whole issue. And l let's just pose the question to Indomoli. Yes. From the school's point of view, is there any way to ensure accountability as it is right now? And perhaps is this why you're pushing now for a special fund in one way or the other to ensure that accountability aspect? Uh, thank you very much. The, the issue of accountability becomes a, a challenge at school level. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, at school level, we receive the child uh, maybe with a letter, and then subsequently checks would, uh, would come. Uh, you only realize uh, later that uh, one particular child, the accounts officers uh, received in excess of what was expected to be paid. When you follow up, you realize all these were coming from different um, uh, sponsors. So that's why we are saying if there was a central placement um, uh, uh, bureau or whatever you would call it where information can be placed uh, even we at school would be able to check uh, and uh, tell the parent uh, we are sorry we are not receiving this check because you are also benefiting from this uh, uh, kind of organization and it would be unfair uh, for you to uh, get access while there's another child out there. so uh, uh, reinforcement at school level becomes a little bit uh, uh, challenging um, and number two, the, uh, the other reason that makes it challenging, we do not understand uh, how that child was arrived at uh, to get the scholarship uh, from whatever organization. You know, we, we cannot verify, we cannot uh, question uh, the process that was used. That is entirely upon the organization. That's why it becomes very difficult for schools to reinforce the, that kind of thing. Okay, Kahi, before I let you go, and finally, uh, what's the silver bullet here um, in terms of this coordination of bursaries and, uh, you know, some of the nitty-gritty details that have to be looked at when it comes to funding for this um, struggling families and the struggling students? Briefly. Yeah, uh, what I would say, one, is there must be a robust way of um, uh, uh, finding out whether this child is really needy. Uh, the way uh, maybe equity uh, does its, um, its um, uh, uh, verification. Uh, very robust. And this I want to call upon the, the county governments and uh, the constituency basal funds. Uh, that they need to do a little bit more in terms of uh, really verifying that this child is needed. And once a decision has been made to support a particular student, then let that support be consistent and continuous for a period of four years. You find that a child is supported at the start of Form 1, and uh, along the way this child is abandoned. So you find the the, uh, the transition from primary to secondary is high, uh, but the completion rate, you find that the percentage has gone down. Because somewhere along the line, some of those students who are supported by some other entities just did it at Form 1. And beyond that, the child was, uh, was abandoned. So either we need to, to have uh, enactment of laws that says that... Uh, when an organization, maybe a reputed organization, a government organization, has chosen to support a particular child, uh, then that support must be consistent 
until completion. I agree with uh, Mr. Barasa uh, that uh, Marx alone may not be um, a good factor to determine who to be supported. Because some of those who get very high marks, uh, some of them uh, are needy, and some of them have parents who are capable of doing. So we need to really uh, uh, verify. So that even that child who had uh, marks that may not have looked so well, so good, should be given a chance to be in school. Maybe the presence of that child in school continuously and consistently okay. uh, will make this child improve on his performance. So I just feel that uh, we must have a central uh, coordination uh, uh, bureau on um, information on those benefiting so that we don't over-benefit a particular student. Because at the end of it, Jesse, what we get uh, from these parents, they will come with all manner of excuses uh, why they need uh, uh, that refund. Uh, they will tell you, you know, when the boy was coming in from one, I first paid money borrowed from some somebody uh, i was supposed to return because you could not admit him without money so i need this refund to return to that person but, but you see as schools we also issue receipts okay. to the organization that sponsored this child so refunding becomes a big challenge and we always demand a letter from the sponsoring organization to tell us to refund the money or allocate the same money to another another student. And that's where now conflict between the parent and the school begins. Thank well, you. it's definitely an intricate balance right there. You have to strike a balance in terms of verification. But good point, pushing for the control or, of, or for the setting up of a control coordination bureau in one way or the other. Kai Indimuli, thanks for your time. That's the chairperson of the Kenya Secondary School Heads Association just joining us via way of Zoom to expound on that particular note 